pulmonary hypertension. This is the main pulmonary artery pressure of more than 25 millimeters of mercury at rest. You diagnose a patient with pulmonary hypertension. It predominantly affects women who are raised between 20 and 30 years old. And it is a sporadic disease. Normally, the pulmonary artery systolic pressure at rest is between 15 and 30 millimeters of mercury, and the mean pressure lies between 10 and 18 millimeters of mercury. Pulmonary circulation is a low pressure, low resistance system due to its large cross sectional surface area, so it can accommodate a high blood flow during exercise. In pulmonary hypertension, there is an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance, which leads to an increase in the pulmonary systolic pressure more than 30 mm of mercury or a mean pressure greater than 20 mm of mercury. So when a patient has a mean pressure of more than 20 or 25 mm of mercury, you diagnose pulmonary hypertension. Respiratory failure due to intrinsic pulmonary disease is the most common cause. And the classification of this pulmonary hypertension according to World Health Organization has five groups. That is group one, which is pulmonary arterial hypertension secondary to various disorders. And these diseases are the one that directly cause structural changes, smooth muscle hypertrophy and endothelial dysfunction such as heritable pulmonary arterial hypertension, HIV infections and portal hypertension, and drugs and some toxins. In group 2 is also known as pulmonary venous hypertension secondary to left heart disease. It in will include left ventricular systolic or diastolic dysfunction and valvular heart diseases. Then group 3 is known as pulmonary hypertension that is secondary to lung disease or hypoxemia. And it is caused by an advanced obstructive and restrictive lung disease like COPD, interstitial drug lung disease and pulmonary fibrosis, also bronchiectasis. Group 4 pulmonary hypertension secondary to chronic and thromboembolism. And it consists of pulmonary hypertension that is due to thrombo embolic occlusion of the proximal and distal pulmonary arteries. Lastly, group 5, which is pulmonary arterial hypertension that is secondary to hematologic, systemic, metabolic, or miscellaneous causes. And these causes are like chronic hemolytic anemias, myeloproliferative disorders, some systemic disorders, metabolic disorders, and miscellaneous disorders such as tumor embolization. And the clinical severity can be classified according to New York Heart Association into four classes based on the primary symptoms and functional status. Class 1, pulmonary hypertension without limitation of physical activity. There is no dyspnea, fatigue, chest pain, or near syncope with exertion. And class 2 is pulmonary hypertension with slight limitation of physical activity. There are no symptoms of it rest but ordinary physical activity will cause dyspnea, fatigue and chest pain. Then class 3 includes pulmonary hypertension with a marked limitation in physical activity. There is no symptoms at rest but less than ordinary activity causes dyspnea, fatigue, chest pain and near syncope. And in class 4 we have pulmonary hypertension with inability to perform any physical activity without symptoms. There is an evidence of right heart failure, there is dyspnea, fatigue, at rest and worsening symptoms in any activity. The clinical presentation for this pulmonary hypertension is not specific and has signs such as exertion of breathness, syncope, angina pain, no productive cough, malaise and fatigue, hemoptysis which is rare and on physical examination you realize this in jugular venous distension. A centrated pulmonary valve component of the second heart sound will be heard and right sided third heart sound. Tricuspid regurgitation murmurs will be present and hepatomegaly together with lower extremity edema.
You understand how this can occur sometimes in severe cases. And your laboratory findings only a diagnostic approach. Right sided cardiac catheterization is the main gold standard. Arterial blood gas analysis should be done and it will show hyperventilation with a decrease in partial carbon dioxide pressure. Radiology the CT scan will show enlarged pulmonary arteries and echocardiography with a Doppler shows an enlarged right ventricle. Pulmonary function test should be done together with HIV and outer antibody testing. The ECG will show a right axis deviation and right artery enlargement. Spirometry and ventilation perfusion, thus VQ scanning, pulmonary angiography, and MRI should also be done in these patients. And your treatment therapy consists of oral calcium channel blockers to patients with positive acute vasodilators, otherwise it will not be of any help. Group 1 patients with functional class 3 oral endothelial receptors and antagonists such as ambrisentan and bosentan and also phosphodiesterase inhibitors like sildenafil and tadanafil can be of use. For group 1 patients who are in functional class 3 and 4 or group 1 patients who are unresponsive to the previous therapies, you use prostanoid agents and in a continuous long-term intravenous epoprostenol infusion. And group 4 pulmonary hypertension that is due to tremble embolic state, you will have to administer long-term anticoagulating agents. And pulmonary thromboendotyrectomy can be done in patients who have weighed the benefits of this procedure. Heart lung transplantation may be considered. Sometimes both lungs may be transplanted. And diuretics together with vaccination to prevent these patients against infection.